wanna see good news yeah, 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 yeah. You don't see on regular TV From another perspective, perspective. Something relative to your needs And we gonna have deep subjects oh, yeah. And we gonna turn the lens And there's no topic won't skip, won't skip So please don't miss weekly Yeah, 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 yeah. Greetings, greetings, everyone. My name is Rolanda Spencer, Mr. <laughs> Rolanda Spencer, and we're here with the weekly check-in. As always, we have Miss Lisa Durden that's going to talk today, and we also have Mr. Mikhail <laughs> Mikhail Furness. So um, we're just going to go ahead and get right into it because it's a lot of things that's going on this week that are of interest to everyone. And the first thing is obviously the presidential debate. So Let's just go ahead and get into it. What are your thoughts, opinions, feelings? <laughs> Let's start with you, Mikhail. Since I said your name wrong the first time, we go ahead and start. Uh, I mean, honestly, uh, I thought it was funny. I thought it was like watching a movie, like about two 16-year-old white girls running for senior class president. But it's a remake starring two old white men at seven years old. I mean, there was absolutely nothing professional about it. Mm -hmm. And why I'm not surprised is that for a while, you know, a lot of our uh, political structure has resembled a quote unquote third world country. We've invaded other countries for a political quote unquote alleged political instability that we're seeing right now. Mm -hmm. When they've talked about other countries having uh, foreign influence, whether that's in Haiti, whether it's in Salvador, Honduras, during the, during the 80s, the Iran Contra, the whole Iran Contra scandal, mm -hmm. uh, Latin America in the 80s, uh, the Caribbean throughout time. You know, <clears throat> there's been political malfeasance across the world that the United States has intervened in, and we're going through the same crisis right now, and we got this shit show. And it was apropos that you see and hear pundits, you know, the mainstream, if they call it a shit show, it's really real. And so personally, I wasn't surprised. We have, a, we have an actor mm -hmm. um, running from, you know, we've had one actor before, we had Ronald Reagan. He was an actor, right, right. Mm -hmm. but this guy's a chameleon in a different capacity. And we got another capacity and we got Joe Biden. So we, you know, it was, this is what you get. I wasn't expecting anything of high quality. Uh, I, I tuned in for the entertainment factor. And okay. because I understand, because if you separate the entertainment from the political uh, consequences, we understand how dire we are. But I was not looking for anything intellectual to come wow. out of it. But what you hoped was that the veil is revealed and people would say, yo, this guy is really dangerous. This guy is, but unfortunately, that didn't happen. People still didn't glean that from that whole shit show, so. <laughs> right, all right. So what, what are you thinking, Lisa? How are you feeling about it? Well, the veil's been revealed. <laughs> I'm really so sick of people, not you, I'm just generalizing. <laughs> yeah. that, that, you know, the veil's been revealed. Oh my God, he didn't denounce white supremacy. He didn't denounce white supremacy back when they rolled over folks in Virginia in 2017. Right. Um, so the veil's not been revealed. It's always been there long before Donald Trump was the president. He called for the Central Park Five, the, which who are called the, 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 the exonerated five now. He put an $80,000 ad out to tell the, the lawmakers in New York to bring back the death penalty to kill them. He was sued in court years ago in the 80s for not renting to black folks. So like, he, he told people he can grab women by the pussy. This is when he ran for office. He wasn't the president yet. He can grab you by, right, the, right. Grab you by the pussy. He said, before he was the president, he was running for office, I can walk down Fifth Avenue and shoot you in the head. Nothing will happen to me. Like, there's nothing revealed right, at this right, point. Right. So please right. let's stop saying that, not you, but just all of us. Like, please. Right, right. Okay, right. so that's that. 
Um, <laughs> I, I'm not getting extra black girl like with you know. With the no, go ahead, girl. Did you know, I'm, I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm, I'm getting into it. Get into it. Get into, it. Get into those hands. Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, so uh, that's that. So now let's get into who I really thought would be above the fray. Um, I have a couple of decent words in my vocabulary here and there. I do have a degree I use once in a while. Um, so right. I didn't expect anything from Donald Trump, but I did expect that Joe Biden would be above the fray. But my surprise or my disgust was the moderator. Let me hit him first. I've been on all sides of this kind of thing. I've been a moderator of debates or, or dialogues. I've been the debater on panels on Fox and all kinds of shows on television where there were debates. And I have run for, for political office in that capacity and have has had to participate in political debates with opponents. So mm -hmm. I can speak to all sides, okay? Okay, okay. Let me start with the moderator side. That moderator was an embarrassment. This moderator, Chris Wallace, acted as if he just got out of journalism school and had on a diaper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, first of all, you don't ever allow people to moderate your debate, which is why they call you the moderator. He had the power to turn those hoes mics off. If okay. now let me just give you a I'll give you a, a line. Okay. Okay, gentlemen. I will say, hold on, we live, let me take 60 seconds to say this gentleman, right in the middle of the live. What we ain't about to do is that. What we ain't about to do is that. So what we're gonna do is act like civilized human beings who are running for president or I will turn mics off. That's your choice. So the next time I rephrase a question and you don't take your two minutes and let the other gentleman take the two minutes, your mic will get cut off. I'm letting you guys know when I say turn the mic off, turn that mic off. Okay, that took 30 seconds. Let's do this again, a reset. Let's do a do-over, gentlemen. Okay, John Doe, here's the question. And when, or rather, uh, Donald Trump, and if Donald Trump would have done it again, turn his mic off. Okay, uh, go ahead, Joe Biden. Okay, and then after two or three questions, that child would have stopped that behavior. It's like an actual child. That's why I don't have kids. An actual child, when you ignore their temper tantrums in the middle of the floor, we've all seen kids do it. Not too many black kids, but you know, we've seen kids do it. <laughs> what happens when the kid starts kicking and screaming, ah, I want the cereal, I want the candy, and you pay them no mind, they stop doing it in five seconds. Hmm. That, that, so that's, I blame, first and foremost, the moderator for not moderating. Okay? okay, and that was one way the moderator could have handled it. Another thing, did you notice that at some point the moderator became the pan became the, the candidate? Did you notice that at some point in that debate, he began not liking some of the answers that Donald Trump answered and kept re-asking them? You are not supposed to care what the answer is, Mr. Moderator. He began to say, well, no, but I asked you this. What he was trying to garner an answer he wanted that did happen at some point as well it wasn't always that they were talking over each other it was sometimes the moderator trying to battle with donald trump about donald trump's answers where we get that at you failed mr moderator you are not a journalist you are bootleg so now i'm going to come to the final point about the moderator as we've been noticing a lot of white folks have been getting busted because their parents pay for them to get into these top schools I'm guessing that's how Chris Wallace got his degree. Wow. And I'll move on from there. <laughs> that's, okay. that's a whole nother conversation, sis. And I'll move that's on from there. <laughs> yeah, okay. Now, since I've been on the side of being the person on Fox and other panel, panelists, uh, only when Fox is there, a mess on Fox, but I've been on PIX11 and other, other platforms debating uh, gun control, Black Lives Matter, women's issues, and all kinds of things. If you go on my YouTube channel or you scrub me anywhere and Google me and you look at me anywhere talking to anybody in a debate, now it's not a presidential debate, but I'll just, I'll go to that next. In a debate, you will never see Lisa Renee Durden breaking the fourth wall in that debate and giving a damn what they're saying. You will never see Lisa breaking the fourth wall as actors call it and begin to call you names because the topic is not you shut up. 
The topic is not your clown. This is where Biden failed. If you look at any debate, a high school debate team, any debate, college debate team, they get a topic, let's say uh, abortion, pro-con. If you're there judging that debate and a panel of judges are there and you break the fourth wall and you are arguing the pro point and this person's arguing the con point and you now say pro, the minute you turn over and say, no, that's wrong, you're going to get points taken away. That's not what you're there for to see if that side is wrong. You're there to continue to present your content to convince the person that's giving you the score that you have a great point and they're going to score you. Well, that's what a presidential debate is. We're looking to see what you want to tell us about what you're going to do. So here's another edit. Let's say, for example, I'll use one example so folks can get the example. I like to do examples. When Donald Trump talked about, um, and, I, and I'm a late, I mean, I have a degree in journalism, but, but let's remember. Remember that Joe Biden is a lawyer by profession. Did you get your degree after Cracker Jack's box too? Did your mama pay for you to get your degree, your Juris Doctorate? So when Donald Trump said, yo, yeah, your son was a crackhead and he was on, he was on cocaine. I would have said to him, today's debate is not about my son. Today's debate is about two candidates running for office, me and you. And as of today, I'm here to talk about the issues. As we can see, America, this is not what he's here for. But let me stick to the subject. The issue is, and keep answering the question. And mm -hmm. since we're going to talk about family, your niece wrote a book about you and she called you a narcissist. And so since we're going to talk about that, let's, let's deal with that. And your niece is your niece, but that's lowbrow. Let's handle this question. So you, dread, you, do a little, you do a little dig and get back to the point. You don't stay. And no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. That was too much. Too much. So you don't know how to debate. And you've been a lawyer. What kind of lawyer were you? Were you asleep the whole time? So that's where he failed his base. Biden failed his base. I don't want to hear you calling this man clowns. I don't want to hear you battling back and forth about your son was a weed head and a crack head and a cocaine head or not. That's not what this is about. I don't want to hear you say, shut up. That's You're taking up. The minute, the minute you say, shut up, that's five minutes. Oh, when you take away all the times he was doing that dumbness, you add it up, that's minutes of content we missed. You don't know how to debate even on the debate team because the rules, you broke them. So now, if another person breaks the debate rules, you're doing it too? That's my whole analysis. Right. Okay, now, in the news, it's come out that after um, the debate, two things happened. One, the, um, on the Biden side, a lot of his um, followers, if you, you want to call it that, potential voters, mm -hmm. really felt like he... Um, he kept his composure very well, considering the circumstances, especially when he brought up the son, because, you know, we know that um, Bo Biden died of uh, brain cancer. And of course, his um, other son, Hunter, had issues with drugs and things like that. So it, it was it was definitely a hit below the belt, right, to, to throw him off his square, because that's kind of how I saw it. Um, and then the second thing was he was um, an hour after the debate, he raised, what, $3 million or, um, for his campaign just, you know, and, and we know the debate was a shit show. So what do you think it was that had the people saying, you know what, let's go ahead and push behind him? Is it because Biden made his point or is it because Trump looked like the clown that well, Biden you say, called him? Well, you know... When you raise $3 million, when you are on a presidential stage and you only raise $3 million from a debate, that's a failure. Because you can find that money in the county. But they said within an hour. Don't matter. Don't matter. Don't matter. $3 million, $3 million, $3 million, $3 million in an hour for that kind of run is no money. So that tells you he dropped that ball because he should have he should have raised fifty million dollars in within the hour. That's number one. Number two, I really don't want to hear about somebody talking about your son when you should have known he was going to go there. So you should be ready for that. I don't want to hear no consideration for oh that was my son. Now you went below the belt. There's no such thing as going below the belt in a fight called a presidential debate. It's okay. all below the belt. So that's well, good. well, I'm sorry. I think that. Well, I look yeah. at this two not ways. You. They, he wore, they wore me out, not y'all. <laughs> no, but I look at this as two ways. While, while, while Lisa <laughs> makes valid points, I think that uh, 
we're, we're judging this, we're trying to look at this through our civilized logical eyes. Mm -hmm. And we really haven't realized that right now we're living in a time where the landscape of logic has changed. The presidential office is not held accountable. So if he has not been held accountable for the lies he's told or for grabbing women by the pussy, what makes you think someone like Chris Matthews is going to hold him accountable? So I think, once again, this landscape we have in terms of dignity, in terms of respect, in terms of, okay, even though we're on opposing sides uh, of our ideology, you could take this for an example, uh, when John McCain had a town hall meeting and he corrected, a, when he was running against Barack Obama, he corrected a white lady who made some outlandish allegations. Lady, he's a very good man. We may disagree politically, but he's a good man. We're not in that climate anymore. So I, I think that you have to conform. That's and, something you should have told. That's something you don't have to tell us. We're on here. That's something you should have well, told us. Well, I, I think we, we know that, but I think in this game the, that the, the, we're the, the Joe Biden, Biden should have known that. That's something for us to know. We but late. when you're in the throes of the, of the uh, combat, I don't think you can go back and Get out of combat you can't handle the bullet. Role. I think you, you have, have to combat to, can't to a the bullet. side. You know you're going in combat, have those bombs, have those aspect, guns, have those knives. to be more nuanced. I no. don't think people want to turn no. the cheek. Get out of they combat. They want to hear somebody okay. address the issue. Wait a minute, I can't, I can't hear both of you guys at the same time. So no, was it wait. possible to address the issues? Yes. Yes, yes and, I, yes and no. no. However, no, yes and yes. I don't think, no, yes and yes. as a parent, as a parent, as a parent, I'm speaking as a parent. I don't care how professional I am. <laughs> that cro that line is my child. I understand. I don't care how professional. I don't care how professional. And when someone brings up something that is traumatic that has happened to your child that you know you have been there through the thick and to thin. Now I can see if he went back and talked about his children. Mm -hmm. I can see if he yeah. went back and talked about you know the first lady, and some of her pictures. But the fact that you know he came, he bit back in a way that was non non presidential, non formal. If the president, it may, it may rub some Biden, people wrong. If but Joe we're Biden not wants to be the president of the United States, if you Joe Biden cannot fight a bear with no, a feather, no, you if Joe Biden fight a bear with a feather, you got to bring Joe, a bat for a bear. If and Joe Biden a wants to be so the president, I, once again, I'm not. I wasn't looking for. Mm -hmm. uh, someone to be intellectual, but unlike the Republican candidates, who all Howard, but no, peep this though, peep this. This man called Ted Cruz's wife ugly and fat, who cares? And that's his home. Who cares? Who I cares? think you needed to, show some, you needed to think, show some. I'm from North New Jersey. We call we do your mama jokes. I don't care. When I'm from North New Jersey. We do your mama jokes. If you little, can't take your that mama wasn't about an argument. No. That was about showing strength, and I don't no, think that no. was the oh, best. It was about policy. Let, it was about well, Wanda, let me say this, for Wanda, real quick. Real okay, quick. Okay. Say this. No, Just, it's important. It's important. It's very important. Please watch this, people. If the president of the United States of America, whoever gets in office, cannot handle somebody talking about their son, they can't handle enemies in war. If you can't handle people talking about your junkie son, who was a junkie, and, and bringing it up again, or your son who's deceased, you can't handle Putin. If you can't handle Donald Trump on stage calling your son who's dead names, then you can't handle fighting a war in yeah. Afghanistan. I, you I, well, I, well, I, I, I hear what I, you're no, saying, I Lisa, but I'm going to, I think... I global think, leaders again, don't do that. No, yeah, I global would say, leaders don't I, do as that. A parent, Barack I Obama I, dealt with yeah. people calling him a nigga. Barack <laughs> Obama dealt with people. Uh, uh, right, and that's exactly right. And he didn't, so he didn't turn did, around and act the fool. Again, global leaders, <laughs> I, I don't think global right. leaders do and Obama, that. And Obama, that's a great it's example. A, Obama was called a nigger and he didn't turn around and act the fool because he's heard it before. I didn't call him that. Hold on, I wouldn't say that by him acting the fool. That was by and large the American populace. Huh? Yeah, I wouldn't. I would argue that he didn't. Biden didn't act a fool by a, by he answering act, he or responding one. that. Huh? What did he do, Rolanda? I think that what he did was he he was just human. I think that he just was like you know if if I don't need that. It I can go around like to me is that don't want us to do that. I need a I'm president sorry? That's human. Because well, this see, is the thing is, but we already more. we have a president. That I don't need fool no on you a regular know. basis. But like he, he said, we, we he, have that now. No, but we Obama, that no, today. Obama, Obama 
in the face of being called a nigger many times and all kinds of things and, and terrorists, he still stayed on task. I would, I I would argue that, that, like if that. They called, if they called Sasha or Malia, he still they, they uh, did, a they did, they did, or something they did, like that. They did I, I, say I everything about Sasha that Malia. They, they, call, they talked about Sasha Malia too. They but didn't talk about during the But, but see, the difference was no, it wasn't they a did. political candidate. Right. It's one it thing wasn't, when it's coming from a, a candidate. It doesn't matter where it's coming from. Exactly. Like you running for president of the United States. You don't matter where it's coming from. You don't matter where it's coming from. It doesn't come from McCain. I understand it didn't it's come ignorant. from Robbie. It didn't come from Clinton. That means we you know, want rules. That means you want rules your way. Politics is not rules. Politics is all our That means you want rules your way. Joe Biden knows politics is dirty. You can't have things your way. Politics is dirty. It comes from anywhere. That's it. So let so I would argue then then the, so it's it's sort of a, the same thing then if yes we're fighting dirty and yes. we're going to just we're just gonna go completely off the cuff. Biden did that, but not to the degree that uh, Trump did. You no, know Biden didn't have content with his. No, no, no. Well, he no, didn't he have didn't, content. But, but I would argue that you That's know. The I'm, I'm not saying that the debate was was done it was shit well shit. by either, either one of them. It mm -hmm. was comical at best. You know, yes, we I wouldn't did. really we wouldn't really expect a seasoned politician like Biden it, to get it, right. thrown by this. That's but, what I'm trying to say. Yes, yes, and I and I get that, and I think, but I also think it was a tactic. It worked on. Trump's part to a certain degree. And too bad Biden <laughs> fell into the trap, and, and, and he's he dumb, did, and he not did fall dumb. into it. But I would also argue that for the average person, because I think Trump is trying to appeal to the lowest common denominator. Of course, right? he always has. And so, yeah. Right. And I think, but I for the moderate person, when they look at the situation, not through the eyes of a politician, but in the eyes of a person, a father, a human, it's I'm like, a person. I'm a. No, I'm, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying. So, I'm not talking person. about you. I'm a person. I'm a human. No, I'm no, so no, no. I'm, I'm a just home, saying. I'm a home. I'm a homeowner who I, I don't have any right. insurance. But I have no medical I mean, insurance. I looked at it as a person, a human, no, I'm not a saying homeowner, that you, a tax I'm, I'm not saying no, that you did. No, I'm saying to I'm you. Saying that everybody to the saw that shit show. Who janitors saw it. People who are lawyers saw it. People who are teachers saw it. People who are doctors saw it. Athletes saw it. Everybody saw that national shit show from all walks of life, from all economic backgrounds, all uh, educated backgrounds, mothers, fathers, LGBTQ, no mothers and fathers. Dead folks saw it. They turned over in their graves. My mother turned over in her grave. It was a disaster. But, but what my point is, is that I think that that's why people could relate to how by who's the people responded. i could relate I, there's to a lot of people if you look on there's a lot right. of people and it's a lot right. of that especially that, parents and a lot said that, he's that, stuck. That, uh, there's a there's a, and a lot, lot said of people stuck. who who stood up and said you know what he handled that because if he would have said that about my son but, but, see that, but they're not running for president of course they would say that yes, they're not running for president he, exactly they're but only you have to appeal the person that said that appeal to the people but no but no 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 i'm a person though I'm a person. He didn't appeal to me. Right. He but you're not the only person. person. But, but a lot, not but the a only lot of person. people, a lot of people okay. on my page said he stunk up the place. Let's bring this okay. down so we can so, have a conversation. I'm just telling so, you. Than, yes, let's have a conversation. Let's he can't do that. Wait, hold on. He cannot do that the next debate. He cannot do that the next debate. He cannot get in his feelings about what people say about his personal family. That's one on one. He cannot do that. That was totally terrible. Okay. Rolanda, yeah. Rolanda. So uh, <laughs> I think as we look at the changing climate of politics, uh, Trump, you know, speaks in a certain code to certain people. That's true. And I think that with Biden, the people who didn't vote for the people are the people he's speaking in code to. So if you have a son, so unlike the, 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 the crack epidemic, in the 80s where black people were villainized, white people can find sympathy and find sickness and find comfort mm -hmm. in the fact that they're, you know, they're suffering from drug addiction. He speaks mm -hmm. to those parents. He speaks right. to parents whose children went to war and were considered losers and suckers. So when he speaks up and defends them, he appeals to those voters who may not look like Lisa, 
who live in right. Kansas, who live in Iowa, who live in North Dakota, who live in South Dakota. He's speaking to people whose language we don't understand. So I get the perspective that you may not agree with how he did it, but that he wasn't speaking to you. He's speaking to Lisa, 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 Lisa. He's he speaking, Lisa, if I may continue. He's speaking to the voters or he's speaking to people that he feels he needs to attract. Because once again, that's the problem. this is not and a traditional policy. This is he, not a traditional political that. And he disenfranchised an entire, and, he, and it also, I agree with you, he was, try, he was trying to play the middle. Let, 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 let's let him finish his point, though. Um, okay, but, okay. I, but I think, once again, as Black people, we have to understand, if this is about changing things as it works, it's not just one finger, it's nine other digits, and they look mm -hmm. different, but it's all two hands, and they all work in concert. So even though at that moment in time, he did not address, and, I, and, and I'm not going to look to the Democratic Party or any political party to address Black issues, but I think in terms of the people who did not vote, who were definitely not, who definitely were not supporting Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. who definitely voted for uh, Donald Trump, he had to speak to issues that affected them, that, he, that only a white man can address and bring some sympathy to. And that, whether we like that tactic or not, he used it, he employed it, and we'll just have to see what the next phases are from the debate. I don't know that we're looking from policy for, from him, but I think we may find some of that from K Kamala Harris. I think that's where you may get some logic coming from, from that perspective. But I think what you have right now is a battle uh, between two 70-year-old white men <laughs> the average <laughs> black man <laughs> and black woman cannot fight. And that's not our fight. So the fact that I'm not personally invested in the in debate in terms of, oh, I'm glad you show this continually because this is not my fight. This fight is between these two white men and that situation. The issues we have to deal with let me know when I can jump in, Rhonda. Let me know when I can jump in. Oh, no, no, I just wanted him to, uh, think, think, to be able to finish he's, he's his point. So go ahead, himself. sister. Go ahead. Okay. Let me know when yeah. I can jump in. Okay. Ahead, you okay. Let me just take y'all back. Because it's two against one. It's not a problem. I can handle it. Okay. <laughs> no, I still love y'all. No, no, no. no, 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 no it's no problem. It's a, I got it. I got a problem. I'm good. I'm real grown. No, I'm real grown. Let me finish. Let me finish. Don't jump in. Let me say my whole piece. Like you went your long piece. Let me finish my piece. Leading up to this debate, and y'all know this, everybody, everybody, five-year-olds, pundits, people on the street, sweeping floors, everybody was saying, oh, Lord, please let this man not act stupid on TV, meaning Biden. Everybody was worried about his performance because he's been showing us along the way in interviews and things that he can't handle it. This is before the Trump-Biden debate was coming up. This is the worry of his, not just the middle, because the middle don't care, to your point, they're not saying that because they don't, they're in the middle. They're undecided. I'm saying the ones who said, and I'm going to tell you two points, everybody, meaning the ones who said, I don't like him, but I'm going to still vote. That's a lot of people who've been saying it. Everyone knows, everybody was saying, I don't like, but I got to do it to get out of Trump. All those millions of people were saying that when he got the nomination and then leading up to this debate, oh, Lord, I hope this man don't act a fool. These are the millions of people, and they come from all ages, all genders, all parents, no parents, and these are the ones that he let down because we had been saying, we gonna ride with you even though we think you're not ready. We been said these are the millions of people who kept saying online and everywhere, mamas, daddies, babies, kids, uncles, aunties were saying, we just gotta get Trump out, we gonna ride for the cause. These are the people I'm talking about, not the ones who are undecided, the ones who are decided. And we still want you to hold up what you're supposed to do. We want your plan. We want all these things. And we keep saying this week, can you get better? Oh, Lord, that whole get the air was let out of all of us who thought that. And it's not just Lisa Durden who 
who's a professional journalist, is everybody who's been saying it by the millions. This is what happened the other night. We don't even like you before you went into the debate. We just gonna let you get that job because you better than the other monster that's in there. And then you turned into the monster. We said we don't want, not the same exact way, but you, we, it's, not that we're not gonna ride with him still, but this is what was the fear and our worst fear was realized. So do, to your point, I understand he was playing to the middle and that was his problem. You let all of us down who were decided that we were gonna vote for you. We still gonna ride with you, but we still felt like you let us down. And that's the problem in politics. You take, that's why Hillary Clinton didn't win. She was saying the burden of hand gonna vote for me anyway. I'm dealing with the, I'm trying to get the burden of Bush. That's the mistake Democrats keep making. They keep playing to the bird in the bush and not the bird in the hand. That's the problem. And I'm going to tell you right here, I think Donald Trump's going to win this election. And I hope he doesn't because I'm voting for Biden. Be real clear. But I feel like this is not going to work. I'm, he, he has to get people like us to stand. We already said we commit. Don't make me change my mind. Okay. Not well, me. you know what? Real quick, in, in 10 seconds, okay. you may have a bird in the hand. But if you can get the other bird to come out the bush, you got two birds. And that's and that's why he gonna lose. And that's why he gonna lose. And that's why and that's why he gonna lose. That's why Hillary Clinton. That's you said five seconds. That's why Hillary Clinton lost. Hillary Clinton was going for the bird in the bush, and she lost. That's why she lost. Well, we, we if we got if all the birds come out, all the birds. They not. But they not. Well, we can. Okay, let's, we can. <laughs> let's 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 switch gears a little bit. Yeah. We we um are going to still talk about the debate, okay. but all, let's let's talk about the uh, potential for uh, civil unrest as a result of the uh, Proud Boys and um, Trump not having the ability or the want or yeah. need to disavow them during the debate. What do we think is going on? Do we need to get armed? Do we need to get strapped up and get in the streets? So what's happening with this? Let's let's talk about it. Well, you know, by my estimation, before you get to the 13th Amendment, you got to go through one and two. Mm -hmm. So we don't, uh, you know, if we don't, you know, advocate 13th Amendment, 14th, 15th Amendment, we need to make sure we understand all the amendments. And okay. so we probably should have been uh you know fulfilling our constitutional duties to you know protect our families and home but once again i love the way you said that it was <laughs> but, but you know but, I hear you. but the bottom line is this what's new the clan has never been listed as a, as a hate group they've been doing this the yeah. skinheads the nazis mm -hmm. i mean this, this is this has been what's new so you know when you live under this condition you become desensitized to it. Was I expecting it? No, but once again, um, something should be a clarion call. It, it shouldn't take this to be a clarion call. It, may, it, it, it should have taken, you know, Natasha Harlins to be a clarion call. Okay, it should have right. taken Rosewood to be a clarion call to say, hey, you know what, maybe we need to strap up and make sure we police our own neighborhood. Maybe we need to have, a, you know, let me not say that, but I, I'll say this. We should have some logical responses and logical uh, protection in our community and adhere to the Second Amendment logically. For those who don't uh, agree with that, that's cool too. But for those who are uh, law-abiding firearm uh, users, be responsible, be trained. And, you know, once they understand that, if people understand that, you know, you're going to bite back, they're not going to bite at you and bark at you. They'll respect you. But I think they think that a lot of us are kumbaya, we're going to turn the other cheek, and that uh, Black folk aren't wise enough to say, okay, you know, we've had enough. So I hope it doesn't lead to that, but I think the alternative needs to be such that, okay, you know, I can keep the peace, and I can keep <laughs> the peace. Uh, well, there you have it. What's up, Lisa? What are you thinking about? I know you got some opinions, girl. Let's hear no, that, that, I'm not as, I'm, <laughs> I'm not as happy about that section. I've been living in the war zone for, for 56 years. I live in Newark, so I mean, I, there's nothing new for me. Yeah. But um, so I, I do feel like it, I believe in the Second Amendment, you know, the right to bear arms to protect yourself. I do feel like, um, you know, this isn't, I mean, I agree with everything, you know, um, both of you are saying about it, but I, I feel like uh, this is not what he's, what Donald Trump said yesterday about the whatever should not have sparked this. This should have been going on the minute he ran for office. 
The no minute doubt. Off I office, agree. The minute this again, people act like this is something new. Please stop, people. This is mm -hmm. nothing new. The man's been terrorizing right. black people for years, long before he ran for office, long before he was on the Apprentice. So, black people, if you're gonna just drill down on one man called Donald Trump, then you missed the you missed the mark. The whole right, right. So, I, so, I, I, I agree. This, I agree. Can I give you back your point? Let me finish. Let me finish. This yeah. should have been at play. This should have been at play for black folks before that period. That's point blank. Now, I don't want to own a gun because I'm too scared to shoot somebody, but certainly I'm okay with those who have legal guns. So I keep hearing people hanging their head on this one man as if racism just started with Donald Trump. I just don't understand black yeah. folks who have amnesia. I don't have amnesia. I'm 50, I've been, I have, I'm, I've been living over, 50, over a century, half a century, half a century. So there are things, some things I do know. So this to me is really weird that they act we had a post-racial society during during um, a, the black presidency. I don't know what happened, but I've never seen nothing different then to now, before Trump or after Trump, except for he's just an idiot. But all this other stuff has been going on. He's just the person that tells you in your face. But but we've always had white supremacist presidents. They all are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what do people say? I mean, George Bush left people to die when their levees broke. And that's when Kanye had good sense and said, George Bush don't like black people. That's correct. So have we forgotten? So why didn't you have guns, at least from that point? I mean, there's many checkpoints, but we should have been armed up for those of you who don't mind owning a gun. I don't want to own one, just letting you know. So I don't know where the amnesia comes from. That's my so what? So what do you think needs to happen for black folks in particular to take it as a serious threat. Well, well you know what? I think even if you, this whole classification, it's not an FBI issue. Uh, the mm -hmm. FBI can, that's a federal, federal government issue. It's not a presidential issue. So I don't, I don't know mm -hmm. that he can alone do that while we're looking for him. A big of course not, right. You can't change but people. But it takes right. other political issues and other black politicians and other blacks when they get in office and other uh, like-minded uh, politicians who believe in social justice say, okay, let's make sure we characterize these groups as hate groups. And until mm -hmm. you get uh, politicians with some backbones that can draft some legisla legislation and follow it through, then yeah, those, those changes can be made. Now, in terms of Black people, I just think that, you know, that, that's when it comes to different aspects, I guess, when you call in policing into effect. You know, mm -hmm. if, if we had different forms of community type policing in play where we can watch our own communities and that can prevent certain things from happening. It doesn't have to be law enforcement per se, right. but what if we, you know, there were retired, you know, military men or right. people who were mm -hmm. on uh, uh, reserve, uh, you know, like reserve or, you know, people who are into the arts, uh, even people who are in the gangs. There are different ways you can form co a coalition of community members to mm -hmm. protect the community. For example, I, I forget what state it was, but I think um, I read an article about a while back about this sister. She was being terrorized by these whites in her community, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they were, you know, messing with her car, doing all kinds of things. And, and she posted on Facebook, and all of a sudden, these brothers came in the community and, and, and began, like, watch guards for her house 24 mm -hmm. hours. That's they made true. sure she got out safe. They 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 stood watch at night. People was driving by all the drive all the, all the little random drive by stopped at night. The the, the the graffiti stopped. You know all that. You know destruction of property stopped, and she was able to get by. So I think in in those areas, you know, uh, for those beings who are, you know, inclined as such. But I think we need we probably need to go in that route. We, we these are these are things that go into our political agenda. So like community think, policing think, is what you're talking about. But policing, we, and, and I don't mean, you know, quote unquote, state and government, that, that may have to No, work. like community the, policing, the right? Community Where the community takes a lot of response. Okay. By our turn and our people who live in our community. And then also that would also possibly bring, uh, bridge some of those gaps. We have a real crisis between the older generations the, and the younger generation. Mm -hmm. So these okay. ways we can understand each other uh, talk with each other, uh, share ideas, understand how things have changed, how things are, are the same, uh, and share our experiences and understand, you know what, we all want the community or quote unquote hood to stay where it is. We, we want to protect our place. We want to have a place to live. And if we can come to some kind of consensus 
um, that is apart from or inclusive of where do we go with, with the black agenda, that, that's powerful. It doesn't have to include other people, but it can be inclusive, but it also has to be exclusive. Oh, okay. Lisa? I think uh, two things need to happen. We need to defund the police in all police departments around the country. And mm -hmm. now there's all kinds of people definitions and iterations of it. My definition of defund the police is not to get rid of the police departments. We need some policing in our communities when there's crimes happening. But I think that, cause like, let's forget about training. Police officers don't need no more training because they don't need training when they see white faces, do they? They didn't need training when they saw Dylan Roof shoot up all those black people in the church. They knew how not to kill him when they arrested him, right? So they didn't need training then, did they? They didn't need training three weeks ago, about a month or so ago, when they arrested this white boy during the COVID with bombs in his backpack. Not only did they arrest him without incident, they gave him a mask and the cop had a mask. So for some reason, their training, their training seems to kick in. Their training- And he was protecting small businesses. Right. Hold on, let me finish my point. Let me finish my point. Their training seems to kick in, right? When they see white faces in white places or white faces in black places killing us. Their training kicked in when that white boy, the teenager, was that walking up street with a big AK-47 or big ass machine gun, whatever the thing he had, and was shooting up people and killed two protesters. So they do know how to do this in a civil manner. They are choosing to kill black people because it's all out. It's like a, it's like a, 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 a fight on the, out in the OK Corral. I forgot what I'm trying to say, but you get what I'm saying. It's all, they're like, oh yes, yeah, time to kill some Negroes. So that's what they're doing when they're coming to our communities. When they're coming, to, when they when they're making, when somebody's making a call, it's us doing something. So the first order of business is defund the police and get it right, get the budget right down to just having the police officers respond to actual crimes, meaning crimes, murder, killings, crimes. We don't need police officers responding to you know, um, uh, traffic violations and infractions. We can have like some like, you know, little ticker meter maids or something doing that. We don't need them responding to that. It's not a crime, it's an infraction. We don't need police officers responding to mental health crises. We don't need police officers responding to somebody that had an overdose or some kind of drug addiction or some kind of drug thing because now they're saying it's not a crime. When black folks were on crack, they called us crackheads. They said, we're gonna get tough on crime and just say no. Now they're saying it's an opioid crisis and a health crisis, but they still go into black neighborhoods and treating it as a crime, although they're saying it's not anymore. So we don't need cops being called for those things. So the first thing we need is defund the police in all states. And they need to make that a, a, um, a federal law and all states have to adopt that. In, in the spread to each cities. Then what they need to do is have civilian review boards with investigatory powers. Even when you defund the police, there should be civilian review boards that have investigatory, investigatory powers. We have one here in Newark. Some other states, some other cities have them, a couple of, I don't know them all. But, but even in the city of Newark, they're fighting in court as we speak to get the investigatory power so that the civilian review board, when they review, they can punish also. We now review, we investigate it, we determine that this police officer is in fact guilty of X, Y, and Z, and here's the punishment. They don't Isn't have that. Isn't that the police too? No, 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 Doesn't no. Doesn't no. that turn them into the police? They have no, 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 okay. the civil, no, no. The civilian review board are civilians. When no, we, I understand that, but I'm talking no, about in practice. No, 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 no. Like you said, the community, I don't want gang members doing this. Like you said, when you say community, who are they? The civilian review board are very people he mentioned from the community. You will have, these people come from everywhere. So in other words, just to Why say- Why not gang he, members though? No, 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 let me finish my point. Okay. He was listing lots of people who could do things. I'm saying, and they can be thrown on a civilian review board. I'm saying what he's saying, but something more structured called a civilian review board, where you get those folks from. I don't mind, they, they, we get them from the pool of what he said, but they're not cops. They are the civilians from the community of the list that uh, Brother Mikhail said, Mikhail, Mikhail, if I'm saying it right, said, pull them from that list and they become, you know, you pick so many, 15, I don't know the number, and they are now reviewing. So they're not police officers, they're not cops, they're civilians, they're regular people. So they can make the decision in, in a, an investigatory body that can decide that you committed this crime with Breonna Taylor. If there was a civilian review, review board now, those cops would have been locked up waiting trial. And thirdly, oh. and thirdly, they need to get rid of they need to abolish um, uh, grand juries. They're not necessary because the fact is, people don't understand this about, about, um, about um, uh, attorney generals. Attorney generals don't have to take what the grand jury uh, suggests. 
the, 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 furthermore, they can decide they want to press forward with charges. That's a waste of taxpayers' time. We don't need grand juries because the decision really is the prosecutor's decision at the end of the day. And, and to, you know, and why I suggested, you know, why I think gang members, and I don't mean quote unquote gang members, but what, what I, my experience, uh, professional experience, their anti, uh, their gang intervention programs. Okay, because you said gang members. These, I, I didn't know you said gang so, members. Right, so these, these are often, these are, maybe I misspoke. So okay. maybe, so, but in my experience, members, when I was working, they, they're reformed or they, they still have attachments to the community, but more importantly, yeah. they are, they, they communicate in a language that, the average person cannot communicate and they have the influence yeah. to influence people. So that having these people aboard to be able to have the ear to the street yeah. and then having them interact with people on a professional level is key yep. to curing the neighborhood issues because you can de-escalate a, a lot of issues mm -hmm. through mediation as yep. opposed to the conflict with the police. And, and, more, and, and it's even more important too, that ha having interactions and relationship with these, with, 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 with a broad spectrum of people from a diverse professional background, whether it's uh, re reform gang members, current gang members, uh, people who leave the hood and go to college and come back, people who live in different social, it's important that as we broaden this perspective, this, 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 this uh, this program, this, this mission, it's a coalition. And I don't just mean to some rainbow coalition, but I mean coalition <laughs> of like-minded people who are willing to share in those experiences and get a greater understanding of how do we move this forward. Because one, it ain't just one block, it's one block right. connects with another one. And let me and so add we want to be able to move. Yeah. No, I was gonna say, and I like that. And let me add to that, we keep saying the hood. Let's remember, let's remember. Now I live in the hood, so I'm not trying to dis yeah. what But let's remember that every time we say black, it's the hood. There's lots of black people who don't live in the hood. There are right. lots of black people who have be, a, a wealth of education who live in the suburbs who will all be always beaten and killed. It's not just poor black people, it's black people. Black people, people of color, but mostly black people. So we need to make sure we don't disenfranchise those people because they don't feel like they're us, but they are us. It's Oprah, it's the doctor in the, in, that live in Livingston, right. New Jersey. It's the next door neighbor dentist because Chris Rock said the dentist lives next to him in Alpine, New Jersey, or wherever you are in the country and you are doing well and you're black. We are all at risk of police brutality. And many of us, Chris Rock talked about how he got stopped constantly in California. And when they stop him, they always Chris Rock, he gets let go, but he still gets harassed. So right. he may not. Bill Cosby's son got murdered on the side of the road when his car broke down. So let's make sure we expand. That's why I like the phrase civilian review board, because the word hood is not in that. So the civilian yeah. review board, the civilian review board, now I'm not trying to figure out how you devise it, or yeah. maybe, the mayor, maybe the mayor of the city can figure out how they can go about, you know, looking at resumes and who can apply and all that kind of stuff, but it should be something called that. Civilians, that means, for example, in the city of Newark alone, we have 300,000 black people, and most of us are poor, but there's lots of black judges who live in Newark, lots of rich folks who live in Newark. I'm not one of them. So if we say the hood, they don't mean judge so-and-so. If they say the hood, they don't mean so-and-so. We mean civilian review, review board. So I think to me, that would be something real cool that can be consistent across the country and pull from that same pool of people. Like you said, people who've been you know, um, even drug dealers who are no longer in the game and they're out and doing things. Even people who are now, they are former drug addicts and they're now on the right road and they are counsel drug counselors, or it could be a doctor. It could be a person that works for Dunkin' Donuts. It could be whomever that you now select. And then they're the governing body that the watchdog to the police because that internal affairs is not working. Right. Right. And, and let me clarify, I, I wasn't using the hood from a pejorative standpoint. I'm using it just as shortening mm -hmm. from the neighborhood and where I grew up. And I, to this day, you know, so I, I don't use it as I look down upon. I look at no, the no, no. I know what you're saying. There were but a lot of black lawyers, don't identify. But I, a lot were, of black I, I'm a black dude. I'm, yeah. you know, no matter if, if, with my degree or whatever, one one and a half, right. two degrees, whatever. I'm still true to what I view as the community, right. my right. neighborhood, my no, environment. The reason, why, the reason why I say yeah. that because a lot of blacks have had conversations with me and they they stopped me. It's not I'm I'm not checking you on that, brother. I'm just yeah. saying. A lot of blacks, because I have friends that they go, like my friends don't even understand when I talk about being hungry at night. They're like, what? So yeah. my, one, of my, one of my friends said, Lisa, when you talk to us like that, when you say the hood, I'm not connecting because I'm not from there. So I don't understand what you mean. So I know how you're saying it. So yeah. I'm saying, 
So sometimes it's, it's the connotation that some may have, yeah. meaning black folks who are poor. Living in let, the, let, living let's be clear about one thing. We are from the hood. However right. you want to, wherever you at. That's the whole point every, about it. No, yeah, it's, no it's how, all, it, no, yeah, I'm it's saying what he's, no, I'm saying because what people, you go to no. College, no, I get no, what I'm you're saying, 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 Lisa. I'm, saying, I'm, saying, I'm just saying, saying people, I'm just no, being facetious. If a person doesn't want to identify that, they don't feel like that. So you can't. Right, of course. Right. To no. your point, if you're saying the neighborhood, of course I know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying that, and that's what we're talking about, the neighborhood. Right. And that's, can, that's the point that yeah. I was saying from right. the neighborhood. Right, we all, right. Yes, right. we are from the community, I didn't grow up in right. LA. And, I didn't grow up in Ladera Heights. I didn't grow up in that neighborhood. Right. I grew up where I grew up. Yep. And you know, people always assume, oh, you went here, you went there, you must right. have grew up. No, nah, dude, I grew up over here. I just had some strong parents and some good homies. Right, right. Yes. And see, and one thing that I wanted to to clarify in terms of the um, when I called it policing, I would look at the the um, community. What did you call it again, Lisa? Civilian, I don't wanna, I don't civilian review. A the civilian, civilian review board. I'm not saying. I think that's an excellent idea. My concern would be, um, people are people, right? And that same type of mentality that you have for police officers and their want and need to get into that line of work, that would be the same. I feel like mindset that would transfer to this. Oh, you, so, Rolanda, if you were Rolanda, if you me and Mikhail were on the review board, you would think like that? No, I'm not saying me. I'm saying no, 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 I I'm wouldn't saying, be. I'm so saying, what I'm saying is I wouldn't civilian. be. What I'm saying is I wouldn't be on the civilian review. But if you were, but if you were, but I wouldn't, and that's the point. I would not. Yeah, but I would. Yeah, you, you, you may have. But see, I, I think just when we look at at um, personalities and humanness. What we've seen um, with policing and anything like that, there's a personality type that would be drawn to that. Okay, so I'm a, I'm a sociologist by trade, so I look at social social uh, trends, and what we know for sure is that there is a certain psychological mindset that you have to have to want to even police or oversee or manage people and in, in, in what we consider right and wrong, right? So it would be very easy for that to just be an extension of policing, right? It would it would be very easy for that civilian review board if we if there was enough people on it who were anti-police, who were anti-white, who were, you know, feeling some, especially if they had somebody um, in their family that were harmed or something mm -hmm. like that. It's very easy for that, in my opinion, to become retaliatory, right? I it's when the oppressed sense. becomes the oppressor. Right. And so that, but we, that's for, but that's, but that's, but listen, that's for everything with human beings. I'll give you an example. But, but this is for, no, 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 specifically, I'm talking no, about saying, I'm looking at like, managing the police. Of course, no, we know that this are not managing, they're not managing the police. No, well, not I mean, or investigating the police right. or holding them no, no. accountable or right. whatever it is. Now, right. I'm not saying what, like I said, I think that what you're saying is a great idea. How well, no, that's not we, happening in, it's happening in many cities. It's not my right, idea. Right, <laughs> but it, it, whether it's happening or it's still a good idea. Yeah. My question to both of you is how do we not allow it to turn into another institution? Right, I understand. That is, so that, that's my point. So that's, that's well, what let I'm me let me, let me give you an example. That? Let me give you a, uh, an analogy, right? I mean, okay. to your point, like there's never anything that we do with people that don't turn corrupt. That's a given in life. There's no such right. thing as a gathering of people that will not turn on its own head. Right. That's what the Democrats are effed up because now they turned into thugs too. The Democrats mm -hmm. ain't nothing but the Republicans now. They were not in its inception. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, that, that, uh, you know, even like when you look at your professor, even when you looked at the, the initial reason why they had, uh, what do you call it, when professors have um, tenure, the initial mm -hmm. reason for tenure was for protection, but now people have abused it. So, like, whenever there's people, there's, abuse, there's abuses. Okay, let's look I at I don't it. have tenure. No, let me well, see. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, I know you do, girl. Yeah. So, for example, let me give you an analogy. Okay, like a jury, right? So, mm -hmm. when you go to jury duty, and, and let's say, like, I'll, I've been on jury duty a couple of times. Okay, I've been on jury duty where it was it like some kind of like, you know, some kid had some kind of like, you know, 
medical malpractice suit. I was on a jury duty when somebody was uh, a, a, mur you know, a murder trial and a guy so-called murdered the person that I was on jury duty when somebody was raped. Now, the judge tries to do the diligence to ask you, can you be impartial? I'm not for sure how they can create these people and maybe get the questioning of them before they say you're on it. There has to be some vetting process. I don't know what that is. But let's say there's a vetting process like when you're going to a jury. I was vetted. I wasn't just put on the jury pool. The judge called me to the front. They call you in first. Based on your social security number, you got jury duty. And they ask you certain questions. So right. when, he was, when I was on the rape trial, he asked me plain and simple some questions. And then he said, do you think you can be impartial? It was, a, I'm sorry, it was a, um, a date rape situation. It wasn't like a stranger rape. I said, no, I was raped by my boyfriend. I can't be impartial. He released me. Now, right, right, right. it requires a person, but you, you're never going to have 100% of people being honest. But right, right. I knew that for me, that's murky waters because if it was a stranger rape, I could easily be because you didn't know the girl and he, it, it, it's a little bit easier to be clear. But a mm -hmm. date rape, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like, nah, fool, you're going to jail. But that's too, it's wrong. So I said, no, I can't do it. So some of that will require the vetting process to be something along the lines of someone like yourself trying to figure out how they should vet those folks. But I don't think that it's going to be a thing where it's just going to be most folks on that thing is going to be turning into the cops and, and turning into like, you know, shoot out at the OK Corral. But to your point, you have to you have to consider those things. And that's why if you're putting those civilian review boards together, you have to look at who's vetting them, what you're doing to vet them and why they're there. So even though you may not want to be on one, I would. Now, I don't want to own a gun. I don't want to own a gun, but I believe in the Second Amendment. I choose, I don't want to own a gun, but it doesn't mean I feel others should not. That's my point to you. Just because right. you don't want to be on one doesn't mean it shouldn't be one. I don't want no, to smoke weed. It shouldn't be one. No, no, I'm saying to you, yes, I'm saying right. to you, I'm saying to you, I ride with it. I don't want to smoke right. weed. I don't smoke weed, but I'm going to vote for marijuana to be legalized. I don't want to do reefer. When we're in the 80s, we call it the reefer. So I don't want to do reefer. <laughs> but I'm not going to knock, I'm not going to knock the hustle of those who do. I'm not going to sit there and say something like, well, if you smoke weed, it's a gateway drug. We know that. But it doesn't mean because it potentially could end up to heroin that you might be on heroin. I'm not going to stop the hustle because right. it might be a heroin addict in the mix. Because there's always going to be a heroin addict in the mix. So my right. point is, let grown folks do what they do. And then if you do see infractions, put them off the review board. They're, this is not a long time, lifetime appointment. If you, see, if you see problematic review board members, put them off. It's not like you're there forever, like you're, you know, Ruth Get Bader Ginsburg and going to die on the review board. So do you, just, just so, real happen? quick, uh, oh, go ahead, Yolanda. I'm Kyle, I'm sorry. So uh, I think to your point, uh, you know, that's where the role of uh, sociologists and psychologists yeah. come in. in terms yep, of which I love. Create the questions, create the questions or create the structure by yes. which we analyze and we ensure that the board maintains impartiality and true to the values that are, are uh, required of the community and by the laws. Right. Let's put that on that right. up. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and it's and like anything. I, and when you get when you get a job, when you get a job, and you don't do the job right, they fire you. I mean, it's just that simple. When you go to a church and, you're, and your pastor holds around with all the members, you leave that church. So that's built into everything with human beings. When you don't satisfy the, the mission, <laughs> no. When you don't satisfy, but these are not cops. When you these are these are civilians. When you don't right. satisfy, when you go to the military and you don't act right, you get a dishonorable discharge. That's built firings and discharges and putting off is built into everything that we do in this country. So there is a protection of sorts that will be built into that as well, no differently than anybody else. But to not seriously look at it would be maybe an opportunity missed possibly, you know, but to your point. Right, right, right. And, and see, the thing is, if, uh, if I'm looking, if, uh, if I'm putting my criminologist lens on, it's that that's what we that's what we have to discuss. Human nature is a very big part of this because the police office or the institution of criminal justice in and of itself is is just what it is right Man. it's the people that make it corrupt and make it uh -huh. fucked up in a lot of ways excuse uh -huh. my language no, so you know it's it's um so you kind of have to look at about it's very important right to look at the people who are looking to turn this into an institution where it should be at the community level, right? So once you turn it into the institution and you start getting federal dollars to, to hire people, when you start getting state money, any type of government well, money- Well, I don't think the would, review boards are paid positions. There's no hiring people. No, but what I'm saying, but, but 
no, if I'm it turned into an institution, which I would imagine just because remember, police officers were not, um, it, it was not an institution in its inception. But right? yeah, it was. It, well, yeah, yeah, it's, no, 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 it was, no, when it, when, no, oh, not in the, before, no, um, no, no. In the when policing started, they were initially slave catchers for all intents exactly. and purposes, right? right. So it wasn't an institution. There were people that they'll say, "Hey, we need you. We have a bounty on this person. We're right. looking for this person. Right. Go out and go get them." So it wasn't an institution. It became right. an institution later. So once it became an institution where mm -hmm. people had to have certain qualifications, mm -hmm. they had to go through training. It became um, a capitalist institution it, it needs to it became corrupt like america it, See, it, and it became corrupt fish, right and so from that's, the head that was thing from the, head, the, fish, the fish everything that america touches at some point is in danger of what you just said because it, and then that's my point exactly because, no but that but that's already given that's that's again at your college where you work there's corruption at your college there's corruption in the church there's corruption in in, in capitalism it's supposed to be good for all but it turns corrupt so in the greed so the fish stink from the head it doesn't mean don't do it it means no i'm not saying don't do it i'm saying but, how do we do this how in do a way okay that's, so never you can so, never get there's nothing you can do there's nothing so, you can do to well there has to be otherwise you just have another police force, if i, so if it has I to may be done another way go ahead Michael, so, so I think there, there are so many levels to this there'll always be some corruption you know, I think. There, there are different layers to this i think yeah. you know advisory review boards to determine uh what kind of charges the how legitimate the charges are uh policies for for police in the community by outside forces are one thing but I think when it t comes down to, if you're talking about the boots on the ground and people to walk the neighborhoods, that's why I mentioned people who are in the Army Reserves who may come from that community. Because mm -hmm. those are people who are connected to community. When it but comes to funding, reserve, where you, military, you may you're always... You're a military person. You're in the military. I don't trust the military. Well, 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 well <laughs> That's a problem so I right there. You. I um, said, you say Army Reserve, now you just said what she said. You didn't, you didn't call the military on people. I don't well, want not necessarily. My father, not my necessarily. Father, not, not my father necessarily. in the '60s, but I'm saying not, to not her, you, if you go let, get let a military me. group right there, I'm not even listening. Not to you, but I'm saying if not they, but I'm a reserve, but, I, don't want, I want civilians. I don't want and um, I don't want military in my neighborhood. Period. Okay, but you already have them in your neighborhood. So I know that now. But, 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 but there's a but there's a big difference between people who are actively deployed and people who are part time reservists. You're still people in the military. Who be, My who people in the who military. may actually live in the community on a regular basis, and they just go out. You're still in the military. Once, okay, well, and does that make them a bad person? Does that make yeah, them un unsympathetic to what the community is going through? Does that make them not a valuable liaison between their neighbors and other other community members? I mean, if we only look at it from one perspective. Then yeah, they're in the military. Yeah, but they also are our valuable community members. I've had I've had friends who are in the in, 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 on active reserve, and they don't think like these people who are on the streets. These people who are doing they what they're doing, they civilian, have a bad mentality. All civilians are not going to think like cops. So to to my okay, point, but but when you have policing but, but, in terms of somebody building a relationship, but the mindset we, what's, is, as we're thinking as we're thinking rethinking policing we have to rethink of our communities and how do we build relationships with each other but to remind the point often the biggest to, problem to what me, creates crime to there's me, no relationship the to understand the that, value in the relationships with each other the mentality of a person that would be drawn to the military is the same point she made about those who would be drawn to policing so if not you're necessarily on, some people just no, no, go I because they want to go to college no, I understand I'm making the point that Rolanda made. I'm making the opposite point about what Rolanda made. Rolanda said, as a therapist or as a social worker, or whatever her thing is, and I understood her point. Sociologist, I'm sorry, I'm bugging out. So as a, I got about one minute. So as a sociologist, okay. she said, generally speaking, this is something that could attract that kind of people, which I respect. Well, I feel the same, if that's the case, she can, I can make the same point about those who are attracted to the military of any kind, reservists or otherwise. I, but, but I feel like the small nuance there is, you're not in the military or you're not a cop. That's my better chance is with a person that's not officially in that. But to her point, you, you, you just moving drunk from one room to another, as far as I'm concerned, based on the kind of people you attract who's in the military. Not necessarily because black people, as, as a former teacher, when I, when, most ki when I found that most black kids were going to the military, it wouldn't go to kill nobody. 
No, no, I'm going to, I can saying, go get the I'm GI Grant saying. and go to college. My brother, they, they were brother going, and, and, and some of them who were in the reserve, they were just doing it so they can maintain. And that's how the local arms. And so, so those are two different dynamics. I don't think somebody who wants to go for the and, and uh, I don't think somebody who wants to be a civilian review is someone in the same mentality as someone think from somebody South Carolina who wants who's going to be the We can, we can only hear one person at a time. Those are two different people. Right, but I'm saying to you. Then to my point, I don't, I feel the same way about civilian review boards. I do not agree that people who go there might. Are Did we? Did we lose Jamie? Did we lose her? Well, no. <laughs> okay. All uh. right. I'm not, I'm not sure, but let me go ahead and let you, let you finish your point while we find out what happened. Uh, no, no, I'm just saying that, you know, as we look at all aspects of our community and people who are members of our community, you know, there are people in our community who are lawyers who work against our community. There are people who work for pharmaceutical companies that are against our community, but there are also people who are, who are lawyers and who work for pharmaceutical co uh, companies that are with our community. So we have to be able to look at everybody's component, what they're willing to contribute and what is our power base? What are our resources to choose from? And if we have people that are, are always quote unquote deployed to really aggressive areas for peacekeeping mission, well, why not stay in your community where there really isn't a whole lot of violence and how do you create peace in your community? How do we create peace in our community using various strategies? that okay. may be comfortable to us, may be uncomfortable to us, but are aligned with our community ideology. Now, I would, I, I, and, I, and I agree with you, and, I, and I, I, I think I understand your point in terms of employing the military because they do have weapons training, they have tactical trainings, they know how to manage people, so to speak. So we, we can't um, necessarily assume that they would use that for bad. So I, I, I get that. I'm wondering what the um, what the issue would be if people at the community level just decided for themselves. So for example, if there is, let's say a domestic violence issue in the community, maybe there's like, a, what did they call them back in the day? The guardian angels or something yeah, like that, guardian, that yeah. could come in and defuse that situation rather than calling the police at all. Maybe this doesn't have to be. I remember when you used to call your uncles and shit like that. If something if something right. went wrong, you see right. what I'm saying? Rather than bringing a policing agency into your community, or because uh, a social working agency can be just that's as another dangerous. option too. That's but it can also be for... dangerous, right? Because right. they remove children and people from yeah. your home and things like that. So what if we didn't do it at an institutional level? What if it was just, could, could this be, could it, could it be at a community level and be successful? I, I, so let me, let me clarify something. When I say okay. military, I'm not saying tanks. I'm not saying air. I'm, yes, I, I, I'm I, saying cats that you know. I think a lot of like you have F o, cats that are FOI that they don't need military to break your arm. Exactly. So exactly. I mean, I think as we think this, we we kind of all when when someone says something, I think we automatically think the drastic instead of the continual right. options. Right. And when right. I say that, like I said, reservist people that roll around the developing relationships, understanding if there are problems, and if there are problems, you may consult with the different aspects. Is it, is it a mental health issue? Is it a domestic violence issue? Is it a homeless issue? And from that aspect, policing, you know, filters the different components, different arms. So if there's a mental, mental health crisis, you may need to go, a psychiatrist may need to go with somebody with some, uh, who could put somebody in a headlock. Mm -hmm. That may need that. If you're going to break up a domestic violence, you may need somebody to come in there with a knife. <laughs> but just walking down the street on a regular basis, trying to, and, and doesn't mean that they're going to be active in the street, but it just means that, okay, what are our options to use right, people right, right. who are native to the community, who grew up into the community, who may have even moved out, moved away, but they're still invested in making sure that certain things stay safe, that their, their homies stay safe, their homies' grandmama stay safe, and making right. sure that the next generation doesn't get, uh, played or, 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 or preyed upon by the police. I think there are different, different ways we can address it and put stipulations as opposed to just saying, no, shake right. it up. 
Okay, let me, uh, before we go, I want to just propose this since we're talking about it a little bit. Um, let's look at the mental and physical wellness of Black people right now in our communities with everything going on. You know, we're talking about community police and we're talking about the debates, politics, we have COVID. What's going on? What's happening in our communities right now in terms of mental and physical health? What do you think? And so you haven't even gotten to the reality TV shows. You haven't gotten into <laughs> the yet. music. No, you no, haven't gotten no. into the fact that we, you know, we still ain't dealt with, you know, our identity. So right. this is just one continuum is how do we deal with it? We manifest right. it through our arts. We manifest it through sports. Mm -hmm. So I think we've done a good job of channeling it, but I think there probably needs to be a greater emphasis on, you know, you know, talking to people. I think, I think the stigma is breaking down in our community that you know it's cool to talk to somebody you don't have right, it's right. not you're not weak if you have to confide and, and even being able to talk to a friend talk right. to a relative you know it's a challenge you know you know with the health can we control that can we stop eating at mcdonald's can we stop you know taco bell can we stop all these things we can control the health aspect slightly right probably a little bit more than the mental health because seeing the images of, you know, black men, because as a black man, it's a trip. You're like, okay, another brother got killed. And, dealing and it with becomes desensitizing. So you get desensitized and you become suspicious of people. Mm -hmm. You're suspicious mm -hmm. of where I'm going, who I'm going with. Uh, so I think there are different aspects. And as a black woman, you have your own trauma. Of course. Of and course. black men and black women together have our own trauma. And our right. black children have their own trauma. Right. And so... Right. You know, what we have to make sure we do, I guess, is maybe listen to each other or pause one second before we react until we can get some help. Now, as a black man, and we're talking about mental health, let me, and politics, let me uh, know your thoughts about the whole Kanye West um, um, involvement in politics and, um, and his, well, well, his mental health issues that have been very much put to the forefront. Let me let me know your thoughts about that. Well, you know, I think that you know he doesn't he doesn't speak for me, and, and I hope that you know he doesn't. Uh, I I just hope the big thing is that he gets the help that he needs because I think you know when people who are geniuses, often geniuses are round wound up a lot differently than other people. Right. And not being able to get your artwork out, not being able to get your thoughts out are totally different. So there's a whole lot of things going on there. You know, mm -hmm. I can imagine the lifestyle that he lives with his wife, the, the man for the publicity. Uh, the, I, I, I really don't know the personal stuff behind the scenes to make an accurate assessment and, and place a judgment on that man. Mm -hmm. But what I see as a man, I just would hope that, you know, you, uh, you get a handle on that and own up to your identity, uh, be, be firm in what you believe in, or find something to believe in. And if he's onto this Trump stuff, believe in it. Okay, rock that out. But control how you put that message out, because you look crazy doing it. You know, I <laughs> and think that's a can, fact, yeah. And I think, once again, if you, you, I can't tell a man what to believe in. I can disagree with him. Mm -hmm, I can mm -hmm. say he doesn't speak for me, but I understand. But I think as you deal with the mental health issues, get a hold of that, mm -hmm. because what you believe is not believable. Yeah. It comes off as zany. It comes off as a gimmick. Mm -hmm, Until mm -hmm. you can get a hold and say, you know, this is who I am. This is and not the random toilet shots of you pissing on a Grammy. <laughs> or the mic, you know, there are too many things that are going on that just are you looking for attention or are you looking to speak your, your truth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And are you doing that through the music? Are you doing that through the, the, the fashion, the, the megalomania that he off and the narcissism that he often exudes? All those things are indicative of different issues that you need to get a control of emotionally, I think. Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, this has been an exciting exchange to say the least. <laughs> so uh, are there any parting words, parting thoughts before we come back to it the next time that you no. want to just make sure you want to clarify before we get out of here, get out of here? No, you know, but, I, you know, I thought some of the things that, you know, I thought 
they didn't cover in the election was like the foreign policy. Definitely. Uh, the Palestine-Israel relations, uh, mm -hmm. Saudis and Yemen, nuclear threats. Uh, I, I think those are things that were glossed over. Right. And so we'll see this time, you know, what right. comes up over the next two debates, especially how these things relate, um, you know. Yeah, they didn't talk about anything of importance. Nothing. As, as, as far as I was concerned, there was, there was, no, um, there was no debate. That was an argument. And see, that's yeah. why I think it was tactical. That's why I think it was tactical. Right. Yes, I, yes. I, I so they didn't have to talk. Yeah. It's a free game right now. It was tactical. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, real quick, I read somewhere that uh, people saying all this, but Trump really dropped the ball because on certain points when it came to the uh, laws and his, uh, his, uh, his uh, judicial policies, he was supposed to bring up and mentioned uh, the black woman that he exonerated. He, he got out of jail. What's his, what's his right. name? I cannot remember off the top but of my head. She was in the crowd. She was in the crowd. He didn't know her name. <laughs> he, no, no, he didn't point her out. He didn't point right. her out. He went on another rant. So when yes. he brought up the, you know, what you gonna do for the courts and your, your policies, and, and they were like, yeah, he was supposed to say this and point to the woman in the crowd and the camera was supposed to pant. So they had props in the crowd for Trump that he missed the mark on and fell into the trap. Uh, he panicked. He panicked. Yes. And, and went left. And they were like, you're supposed to go here. You're supposed to. And so they, I, like I, I, I read this. I was like, wow, that's crazy. He fumbled. Right. So that's what makes me think, as I sit back and look at all this, I'm like, dude, this is really a farce. And right. Classic gaslighting behavior right. Right. in the form of a debate. A presidential this debate. movie called Weapons of Mass Distraction. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing that happened in that movie. Right. I'm like, well, this is crazy. Y'all just, y'all just life imitates art, art imitates life. Let me watch this and see how, right. if this is real. So, <laughs> and as I guess, it, I guess it's as real as it, it gets in this, uh, in this particular climate. But um, well, I just want to thank you for mm -hmm. uh, coming in, telling your, t speaking your truth, telling your stories, and. Um, you know, trying to get to some understanding about what's going on right now. It's crazy right now, right? 2020 yeah. is just like insane. You don't really know how to interpret a lot of the things that's going on, but these conversations are very necessary. So I also want to thank Lisa. I don't know what happened to Lisa. She just disappeared, yeah. but I want to thank Lisa yeah. for her her energetic uh, <laughs> conversation. It's a rough week for moderators, huh? I, I know, I know. <laughs> but that's okay. We, we pulled through and we persevered, right? Right. 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 So, um, so until next time, I wish you well. I wish yeah. you peace, mental, great mental health. Great yes. physical health as, as we well. as we move forward in this cycle. If you wanna see good news, yeah, 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 yeah. you don't see on regular TV from another perspective, perspective. something relative to your needs. And we gonna have deep subjects, oh, yeah. and we gonna turn the lens. And there's no topic, won't skip, won't skip. So please don't.